Many example Adobe character animator puppets you see out there tend to stay in one place. But what happens when you want them to move around their scene? Well, you use the walk behavior. There are several ways to set up a moving character, and in this tutorial, we'll explore them all. Let's start by going to the OK Samurai Puppets page and finding and downloading the free example puppet Eliza. There should be two puppets in here, Eliza Simple and Eliza 3 View. We'll start with Eliza Simple. If you double click on this file, it should open up Character Animator and give you a new scene with Eliza walking in place. If I twirl open the walk behavior on the right, I'll see I have a few different choices on how to control her walk with the mode parameter. This one, immediate, is the default. This is probably the best one to work with while rigging because you can see your walk cycle looping over and over again and not worry about your character walking off the side of the screen. The second choice is left and right arrow keys. Selecting this means your character won't walk until you press either the left or right arrows on the keyboard, which causes them to walk in place. If you want the character to move, just turn up the body speed parameter to 100% and the character will walk forwards and backwards, including the ability to walk directly off the screen. If you ever accidentally lose your character, just press the refresh button to get them back to their starting position. The last choice is position based, and this is personally the one I use the most. With this mode, you simply click the stopwatch icon next to position to create a walk position keyframe in the timeline. Then you move the playhead down a little bit and adjust the blue numbers by either dragging over it or clicking and typing in a new value to set an additional position. When you do this, the character walks between the two keyframe positions automatically. So if you want the character to go faster, move the keyframes closer together. If you want the character to go slower, move them farther apart. And if you want the character to pause in a position, copy and paste the same keyframe for your desired duration. There are some limitations with this simple version of Eliza though. For one, if she's not walking, her body will just kind of float in space. This is because her legs need to be able to move freely and independently to walk correctly, so we can't pin them to the ground with fixed handles like we normally would for a stationary puppet. Second, she can't turn to walk to the right, so if I make her go right with the arrow keys or keyframes, she just walks backwards instead. But you do have another option for more control. Let's go back to our original example folder and double click on Eliza 3 view instead to bring her into a new scene. You can immediately see a few differences. First off, notice how she's standing still and not floating in place. And number two, look what happens when you press the left and right arrow keys. She'll start walking and turn if needed. In this version, she never walks backwards. We'll dig deeper in the next section, but what's happening behind the scenes is that this version has three views, standing, left profile, and right profile. When you press the arrow keys or set position keyframes, the walk behavior serves up the correct view. This setup is a little more complicated as it requires you to essentially rig three views instead of one, but it does make the character more versatile. So which walking setup should you pick for your character? Well, it really depends on the type of project. This simple rig is great if you know your character is always going to be walking, or you're fine with your character only being able to walk in one direction. This is exactly how I rigged the guitar playing character Linden in the video Extraneous Lyrics 2019. I had walking and stationary versions of him and swap between them depending on the scene. If this is your first walking character, I would definitely recommend starting with this simpler approach. But if you want everything controlled inside one puppet and don't mind a little extra rigging work, the three view approach is a great choice as well. Let's go through the process of rigging Eliza's simple view from scratch so we can learn the basics of the walk behavior. In character animator, go to file, import, and in the example download file, Let's go into the Unrigged folder and choose Eliza Simple Unrigged.psd. This will import the puppet into our project panel, which we can double click to enter rig mode. Let's see how Eliza's artwork is set up. First, she has each limb in its own group inside the body, and each of these has a crown icon next to them, making them independent so they'll move on their own. Second, there is a central, non independent torso layer that all these limbs overlap with so they have a clear place to connect. The naming isn't important here, just the structure. Third, Eliza is in a three quarters view. Character animator's walk behavior works best with characters in a three quarters view or side profile view, like Walkbot from the home screen. The walk behavior doesn't work with front facing characters yet, so in those cases, you would need to add your own frame by frame cycle layers animations to make a walk cycle. Wonder Boy from the official character animator examples page is a good template to follow if you want to do this. 
The first thing I'll do is add the walk behavior to give Eliza the power to walk. I'll select the top level puppet where all my other behaviors like face and eye gaze live, click the plus button that appears, and select walk from the list below. Next, I'll select a limb and drag its origin handle, the dotted line circle, to where it would connect to the body. When I drag over a valid attach point, the artwork turns green. This ensures that each limb will pivot and rotate from where you'd expect, the shoulder or hip joints. I'll do this for each of the arms and legs. When I select the body group now, I should see four little green dots appear, indicating the limb attachment points. I'll select the head group and do the same. Drag the origin handle to where it connects to the body, around the neck area. While I'm here and have the head origin selected, I'll go over to my tags panel and also tag this as the neck, the dot directly under the head in the figure diagram. This will help the whole head to bob up and down while the character walks. Let's add one more handle and tag and see what happens. I'll select my body group, select the handle tool below, and click around the belly button area to add a new handle. Then I'll tag this as the middle circle in the diagram on the right, the waist. With my Eliza Simple Unrigged Puppet selected, I'll click the clapboard icon below to add her to a new scene. And immediately, I can see that she's bouncing up and down. The walk behavior is looking for up to 18 possible tags I can put on my character. With just these two, neck and waist, it's already got the natural bounce of a walk cycle working. Now, we just have to fill in the other possible tags. Back in rig mode, with the body group still selected on the left and the handle tool still selected down below, we'll add and tag four more handles directly over where the green dots are. So I'll do left shoulder, right shoulder, left hip, and right hip. Then I'll select each limb and add the remaining appropriate tags. For Eliza's left arm, I'll add a left elbow, and a left wrist. For her left leg, I'll add a left knee, left ankle, left heel, and left toe. Let's do the same for the other side. For her right leg, I'll add the right knee, right ankle, right heel, and right toe. Then I'll finish with the right arm and add handles and tags for the right elbow and right wrist. You can also choose to add sticks between some of the handles if you want a little more bone structure. I tend to do this most of the time with my walking characters. And now, if we return to record mode, we should see our character walking. Now, it's rare that our walk is going to look 100% perfect at this stage. The animation you see here is based off of traditional hand-drawn animated walk cycles, but because characters come in all shapes and sizes and personalities, one size doesn't fit all, so we can make some adjustments. First, handle placement plays a big role in how the character reacts. The waist tag is the most important here. The walk behavior expects the waist handle to be centered, but if you move it closer to the front of your character, they'll hunch over and lean forward a little bit. If you move it toward the back, they'll stand up a little straighter. Minor adjustments to handle positions throughout the character rig can have a big impact on the quality of walking, so feel free to experiment. The second area to play around with is the walk behavior itself. All the parameters can be tweaked to give your character different walk treatments. Like here, I think Eliza's arms are a little too far forward, so I'm going to lower the elbow bend parameter and make her hands drop to her side a little more. I might bump up the hip sway and shoulder sway parameters as well to give her upper and lower torso movement a little more depth. But this is all personal choice. You should play around and see what works best for you and your style. For example, Tiffany LaBelle is an Australian-based fashion designer and she uses Character Animator to bring her fashion illustrations to life. To achieve this runway style, she lowers the stride length and step speed, increases the shoulder and hip sway, and plays around with the pose emphasis parameter. Style is another good area to play around with, letting you change between several presets. These include the default walk, slump, strut, prance, sneak, run, and one we threw in just for fun, headbang. If some styles seem to pull the body away from the head too much, try toggling the face behavior's visibility off to disable head tracking and keep things moving together. If I wanted to try the three view approach instead, I could import the eliza 3 view unriggedpsd file. Note that she looks a little different in rig mode. Instead of just a head and body, she has three independent groups, standing, left profile, and right profile. Standing and left profile are essentially the same, the only difference is that her legs in standing view aren't independent, so no crown icons, because we don't need them to move on their own. Right profile is just the original artwork flipped around. 
In Photoshop, you would do this by duplicating the left profile view and going to Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal. And then you would probably want to rename the left limbs to right ones and vice versa. In order for this to work correctly, Character Animator needs to know the left and right profile views. So whatever you want to show up when the character moves left, tag that as left profile, and do the same for moving right with the right profile. When the character isn't walking in either direction, it will default to whatever folder remains, which you don't have to tag as anything. So then the rigging process is pretty straightforward. Just like the simple version, I would first add the walk behavior to the top level puppet. For the standing group, you would want to pin the body to the ground with fixed handles so the character will stay still, and consider adding stuff like draggables into the hands. Then in the two walking views, you would need to add the full walking rigging just like we did for the simple single view version. So that means independent limbs with their origins connected to the torso and all 18 tags in both the left and right profile views. Also make sure all three of these views have their visibility toggled on or you might see a disappearing character when a certain view gets triggered. If you do this correctly, you will see a fully responsive walking character. One thing to note is that there's only one standing view, so because I made this character face left, if they walk right and stop, you'll see them flip back to that standing view. Some characters instead choose to face towards the front in their standing view, that choice is up to you. Also note that this method only works with three views. If you only have a left profile in standing view, for example, it won't work. The walk behavior needs both profile tags. If something is missing or not working right, an excellent resource is the little alert icon in rig mode, which brings up the rigging issues panel. When you're tagging this many parts, it's easy to accidentally forget something. This panel can be a lifesaver instead of needing to hunt through the puppet searching for that one missing tag. The walk behavior is pretty versatile, and in other videos, we've shown a lot of interesting ways to tweak it to do interesting things. Some users figured out if you add walk behaviors to background and foreground elements and adjust their speed slightly, you can create an entire moving system where the character stays in the middle, but the environment moves around them to create the sensation of walking. There's a link to a video explaining this technique in the video description below. If you want your character to have head turns and walking simultaneously, you have to be very careful with your organization and tagging because both these behaviors share the left and right profile view tags, so you can run into potential conflicts if not set up right. There's an example puppet named Walker on the OK Samurai Puppets page that's a great example of this in action if you're interested in this sort of thing. Worker Studio used the walk behavior in an unusual way for their piece Jammy Man. Remember that seemingly useless walk style called Headbang that I showed earlier? Well, they added that to their two musician characters, slowed the pace down to match the tempo of the music, and got puppets who automatically rocked back and forth in time with the beat. Finally, while the walk behavior is designed for two-legged human characters, it's possible to add it to additional limbs for quadrupeds or other non-human creatures. So in this example, I added extra walk behaviors to each additional leg to let them move as well. Admittedly, this is very much a hack right now, and in order to get things to work, you have to tweak the values to be just right. So I actually don't recommend doing this right now. We hope to enable broader walk support in future versions. So that's how you set up a character animator puppet for walking. If you make something cool with this, we'd love to see it. Please share it online with hashtag character animator so we can take a look. And if you're running into troubles rigging your character for walking, the best place to get help is the official character animator forums. Thanks for watching and have fun.